Guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something Matt's one of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you in the new Let's Play episode of Cilio Ties Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. All right. <clears throat> oh, yep. Referred Kyrex, you know, before things got super messy. Kyrex was sort of a law unto himself and Lucas didn't like that much. If I had let him go recently, like a day after him and I ended things. Of course, that wasn't specifically why he did it. There had been a lot leading up to that. It was just sort of the straw that broke the camel's back, you know? Huh, that's right. Lucas mentioned that when he first offered me the job. Didn't mention it was Kyrex, though. Just told me he sacked somebody he referred. Anyway, what did I miss at band practice? Well, they're hoping to do a show soon, a show sometime soon, but they need a bassist first. Do you know anyone? Sorry, dude. I don't know anyone that plays bass. I can play the triangle, though. Somehow, I don't think they're recruiting triangulists. Heh, <laughs> their loss. My triangle skills are out of this universe. But yeah, that aside, not much to say. Uh, Ty said he wants to write a new song for the show, though. Said he was going to write it about someone important to him. Aw, oh, he's going to write you a love song. Jealous? Heh, <laughs> man, that's going to be awkward when he reveals it, knowing what it's about. It's pretty gay of him, dude. Good. I like him gay. Wouldn't want him any other way. I like how that rhymed. Still, I'm real glad you two got everything sorted out. Hearing those nice things he said about you? Man, I never get compliments from my ex. Which reminds me, which reminds me, you listened in on our conversation. It's like I said, I was just making sure things were all good. That's a funny way of saying I was being a nosy bastard. Oh, come on, you don't seriously believe I'd listen in on something like that for the hell of it. I mean... Oh, to, oh, to hell with you. This is what I get for sticking my neck out for you. Man, you're so full of shit. Diego grumpily rolled his eyes. I broke into a fit of laughter. All these years in Diego was still so easy to wind up. I would never go tired of his exaggerated reactions. So anyway, did Ty ever tell you when this camping trip was going to be? You heard that too? Ah, he didn't say. He said you could invite friends, right? I want to come if you, if you'd, uh, you know, have me. On one condition. No more listening in on my private conversations, okay? I will tell you, but until then, you need to be patient. Ugh, fine. Deal. Knowing my luck, it'll be tomorrow, too. He's got me scheduled on the evening shift. Won't even be able to go. I hope not, for your sake. I guess we'll find out, huh? Yeah, I guess. No point stressing about it now. Anyway, I'm gonna head to sleep. It was another big day, and my ears are still ringing. Alright, dude. Sleep well. Catch you in the morning. Night, Diego. I got up from the couch and headed down the hallway before entering Diego's spare bedroom and switching on the light. I closed the door behind me and began to undress before I noticed something sitting on my pillow. Curious, I moved in for a closer look. It was two incredibly familiar $100 bills. God damn it, Diego, this is war! Silly. Alright, Mom. Day 11. The day after the war. Alright, I'm gonna get some water. One second. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. The following morning, having, having stealthily returned the $200 via the pocket of a pair of freshly laundered work pants, freshly laundered work pants whose owner was otherwise preoccupied in the shower, myself and said owner received an invitation to join Axel and Dom for a morning dip in the nearby river. At the time, my calendar was completely clear, and consequently, I agreed to participate. Diego was found to be a touch more reluctant, although out of his own chronic laziness more than anything else. Nonetheless, he would eventually agree to attend, and together we traveled the short distance to our meeting place. Hey guys, I'm so happy you came! Morning, you two. Fine day for a swim, eh? Don't know about you two, but these past few mornings have been getting kind of chilly. It definitely ain't summer no more. Huh. Once you're in the water, you'll come right in no time. Come on, let's go! Oh, hey, you go on ahead, Axel. There's something I wanted to talk to Hunter about. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's okay. I just wanted his advice on uh, the lease agreement. Whoa, you know about that stuff, Hunter? I, uh... I didn't, but something about Dom's delivery implied that it wasn't the real reason he wished to speak to me. And catching the hint, I played along with Dom's ruse. Sure thing, I can help with that. Huh? Leases? You moonlighting as a lawyer or something, Hunter? Dom's face conveyed a sense of mild irritation. His bluff clearly not intended for Diego, but having worked on him nonetheless. I wondered to myself how difficult life must be for someone so consistently gullible. That sort of stuff is so confusing. Come join me in the river when you're done. Axel beamed widely at the three of us before turning tail and happily bounding his way down the riverbank towards the water. I don't know how much use I'll be. I've only ever signed one lease, not counting the dorms, though. I'll try to help you out, though. I don't think that's actually what he wants to talk about, Diego. Yeah, but he just... 
Correct, Hunter. Uh, looks like the looks like Ty's infamous perception is rubbing off on you. Huh. Well, what's this about then? Dom's body language suggested some hesitation on his part before he finally spoke up. Hunter, does Diego know about that thing that we talked about the other day at work? You mean Spencer? Yeah, we talked about it. Turns out Spencer's visited Ty's bar a whole bunch. Really? Good to know. Then I suppose it would be best if you heard what I had to say too, Diego. Huh? You find something about the about the guy? Well, no, but that itself is something worth discussing. I don't get it. Then allow me the opportunity to explain, and perhaps you will. Uh, but before we proceed, I need to ask you guys a favor. Sure thing. What do you need from us? Don't tell Axel any of what I'm about to tell you. He, uh, he knows I have something of a tendency to obsess over things like this, and, well... Dom sighed, rubbing the bridge of his nose between his thumb and forefinger as he determined the best words to complete his sentence. Look, just don't, okay? Can you promise me that? Now I'm wondering what, just what kind of shit you've got yourself into, but all right, Maxwell doesn't have to know. I scratched my chin. I too found myself most curious indeed, especially if it was Axel who was, who was expected to keep Dom on a leash for a change. I didn't like agreeing to something like this without knowing more information, but I had no other leads on Spencer. All right, then. I promise I won't tell Axel a thing. Now, fill us in. What's the big idea? So, a few years back, I did some courses at Woodcrest University. One of my assignments was a paper on the founding of Woodcrest. Figured it'd be a sure bet, but with the university having access to much of the city digital archives. I never knew you studied history. It was actually for language class. The overall objective of the assignment was more about the writing, research, and referencing, and less about the actual subject at hand. If I recall, it just had to be about some historic event, so that's what I chose. So, it's like I said, access to the CDA? Surely a paper like that was going to be a cinch, right? Well, that's just it. A ton of the material was inaccessible to the university. I chalked it up to be to being to somebody screwing up with blah. I chalked it up to be somebody screwing up during the, the during the whitelisting process. It was the most obvious conclusion. So I put in a request for someone to whitelist those archives, and you know what? Not only did I not hear not hear back, but after a week or so, the entire ticket just uh, disappeared from the system. So I'd already wasted a week, and clearly I couldn't rely on the IT team to get things sorted. So. Dom paused, briskly glancing from side to side like some kind of wacky cartoon villain. Whatever he was about to tell us, he didn't want anybody else to be any wiser. Satisfied that her privacy remained intact, but still cautious nonetheless, Dom leaned in closer, finishing his sentence in a hushed tone. I found the back door. Eh? A back door to what? The uni? No, to the system. The CDA. But ain't like that a computer thing? Dom sighed, clearly having overestimated Diego's level of technical literacy. A mildly exasperated Dom continued his story, this time facing more in my direction, a statement affirming his intended audience. Yes, you see, the tech they were using for the system was positively antiquated. Almost as old as I was, in fact, and it was just riddled with security problems. Don't you just love government complacency? So I did my research and found an unpatched exploit that granted me temporary admin privileges. I used those privileges to create an account with greater access rights to the university, but not so powerful it would stand out in their database. It blended right in with several hundred local government workers. Perfect. Whoa, are you like some kind of hacker? No, and that's the most embarrassing part. I was just some whiz kid. I had no idea what I was doing. All the information I needed to break in was easily accessible on the internet. Anyway, I looked at the files I needed, and lo and behold, I couldn't see any good reasons why access would be restricted, and, well, I got a little too into the whole process, not really thinking that if I could, couldn't legitimately access those files, I certainly couldn't cite them in an assignment. Long story short, I switched topics and scraped through with a B+. Not bad, congratulations, but I have to ask, what? I know what you're going to say. What does any of this have to do with Spencer, right? Hmm, we're getting to it, I promise. So the other night, after Spencer showed up at Lucas's and spooked you so bad you fell off your chair, I was racking my brain for how I might, for how I might find out more about the dude. But that's that's when I remembered my account with the CDA. Thank you, know, water time. All right, y'all, we are back. Let's jump right back into it, shall we? Okay. <clears throat> Hunter, you fell out of your chair? I didn't. You would have too, waking up to someone like that. So, what did I... What I did was visit the university. You see, you can only access the CDA via their secure domain, so I just waltzed onto campus, pretending I was a student. Even brought a backpack with me to really sell the act. Then I wafted around the library like a bad smell, waiting for someone to leave the station without logging out. The auto logout kicks in pretty quickly, so I had to be quick. Thankfully, I secured a station and made a connection to the CDA. After all these years, the account still worked. They patched all the security loopholes and updated their systems, and yet there my account was, exactly how I'd left it. 
I honestly expected it would have been purged as part of the security audit or something, but I suppose it was too much to expect from government, right? Of course, I couldn't just rock up the university at any time I wanted to access, so I worked my magic and exploited a server of the university network. I can now connect to my own private, private, private user session remotely. Hm. All these organizations learn. So, the long and short of it, probably more for your benefit, Hunter, is that I can now access the Woodcrest CDA from anywhere there's an internet connection. This is a fantastic resource to have when it comes to finding out about, well, people like uh, Spencer, I suppose. That all sounds kind of dangerous, man. Probably super illegal, too. Illegal, sure, but it's only dangerous if they find out. And they won't find out. Believe me, my tracks are covered. If you say so, dude, but this ain't worth no big risks. Trust me, it's all under control. There's nothing for you to worry about. Guys! Our attention was captured by Axel, who was frantically waving his arms to try and draw our focus. Having succeeded in his goal, he called out to us once again. Come on, the water's great! Won't be long, Axel. We're almost done. Dom called back to Axel, buying us some more time for our conversation as Axel grinned and disappeared beneath the surface of the water. So, you said that you'd looked already, right? Did you find anything? So far, practically zilch. Damn. But you see, that doesn't make any sense. First of all, the sorts of contracts Lucas gets from him are bizarre. Diego, you remember a few months how we were printing and mailing water safety flyers? Oh yeah, one addressed to every single house and business in Woodcrest. There were so many that Ty gave me time off to help Lucas out instead. Not that I was much help. It makes a good case for avoiding relationships in the workplace, doesn't it? Asshole was sneering at me from across the room for the entire day. Anyway, sorry, off topic, I know. Don't sweat it. The point I'm trying to make is that... Isn't that, uh, isn't that something the government themselves should be handling? Hmm, I think so. Maybe Spencer has some kind of association with the town's water supply or something like that. I thought the same thing, so I did my research. Turns out it's totally state-owned, and there's nobody called Spencer who oversees it in any way. Another thought I considered was that he could be some kind of private contractor, but again, there's nobody like that on the books. Nothing whatsoever that relates to him. No receipts, remittance, contracts, nothing. There's not a single mention of him anywhere. Even if he was part of the government himself, there'd be some trace of him. It's, uh, super weird, huh? That's not even the worst part. I punched all your names in it. We all have records in the CDA. Me, Axel, even you, Hunter. Me? What sort of information do they have on me? To be completely fair, very little. Some basic identity stuff, tax filings from Lucas and Ty. That's pretty much it. But you see, that's still one hell of a lot more than Spencer has. The name Spencer comes up a lot over a long period of time, and, but there's at least a few dozen people living here with that name. The only thing that I could find that could feasibly be our guy was a newspaper article about the combat tournament. Excluding that, he's a ghost. Dude, what the hell is going on? It makes no sense. How long do you think Spencer might have been in Woodcrest for? Long enough to long enough to have quite a comprehensive record, at least. I first spotted him myself about a year back when he started giving Lucas those contracts. Hmm, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure he was around when I started at Ties, or maybe he started visiting shortly after. It was a while after that that my Raptor problems started, so maybe a bit over a year for me? That article I mentioned, about the tournament, dated three years ago now. Beyond that, the article doesn't tell us anything new. It's a complete waste of time. Damn, so what are you thinking? We hit a dead end? No, not necessarily. I'm not ready to give up just yet. But there has to be some shred of information that I'm missing. Some seemingly irrelevant thing that blows this case wide open. It just has to be. Wish I could help, dude. A few times I've seen him, he's mostly kept to himself and not said anything much to me. I definitely had more money than sense, though. What kind of dude drinks $3,000 bottles of whiskey? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!